So welcome to the bioinformatics coffee hour. Um, today we're going to look in, at an intro to workflows for data analysis using Snakemake. Uh, so this tutorial was created by myself, Megan Correa, and Ming Tang, one of my former colleagues. Um, he's no, well, no longer with informatics. Um, and I shortened it further for the purposes of this uh, sort of teaser for the coffee hour. And originally we modified the materials from this UC Davis uh, researcher who created a tutorial, which you can find on GitHub as well. Um, there's no license, so if you like this material and want to use it another way, feel free to do so, okay? Um, so one thing is uh, you can go to our GitHub page, the Harvard Informatics GitHub, the Bioinformatics Coffee Hour repository, and you should uh, see that the readme page, the first thing you should open to, um, has the snake make tutorial here and you can click this launch binder button and it should take maybe a minute or two and then you should spin up uh, a Jupyter lab session exactly like what I'll be walking through so you can walk through that also. Okay, um, so my name is Megan Correa and I'm a member of the software operations team at FAS Informatics, and I support the data analysis for the Bauer core, among other things. Um, so this is just gonna be a quick 25 minute teaser on how to get started using Snakemake um, for, for your workflows. Uh, to really learn it, I think you will have to spend your own time applying it to your own research. Um, but this will just get you started. So why use a workflow management tool in general? Um, one, good reason is to have dependency management. So you might have multiple steps that you wanna run and um, the second step might depend on some things created by the first step. And just to sort of manage all those dependencies, a workflow management tool can do that for you. And then re-entrancy, that means starting back up where you left off. So if your first step is a long running job, which is fairly common in bioinformatics, um, and then your second, your second step um, if you finish your first step and the second step has some kind of failure or problem, and then you want to rerun after fixing something, but you don't want to rerun the whole first job, which might have taken hours to do, um, reentrancy would recognize that the first job has been completed and start with the second one. And reusable, so you can potentially reuse your workflow in a second data set, or even potentially um, create a second workflow with pieces that are similar from your original workflow. It's self-documented and it's um, portable, I meaning you can run it locally or you can run it on a cluster. So there are a lot of workflows and um, workflow management tools, sometimes called pipelines, to choose from. I'm just going to click on this link here, which is to a Git repository called Awesome Pipelines, where they just list out uh, well over 100 different pipelines that people have created. Um, these are varying levels of popularity and they all have sort of different niches that they're trying to fill. Um, so it can be quite a uh, confusing domain to kind of choose uh, what tool to use. Um, at FAF, FAS Informatics, we've chosen to use Snakemake uh, for our post-sequencing pipeline as well as some of the other pipelines that folks work with um, because it's written in Python, which is a language we have some familiarity with. And it's fairly popular in the bioinformatics community. And it's well documented and has a lot of growing, growing support. So what we're gonna do today is basically take some fast queue files and we're gonna run Snakemake on them to perform a fast QC job and a multi QC job. Uh, so fast QC is just gonna create some quality statistics on the fast queue data and then multi QC uh, so this FastQC will run per FastQ file, and then MultiQC is going to combine all those FastQC reports into one overall report that summarizes everything for us. Uh, so the software we're going to use has already been installed into this binder container, um, but you can take a look at it. Uh, we're using Conda and Snakemake and packages from Bioconda, and we're using the FastQC and MultiQC software software that I mentioned. Um, you can see a full set of the requirements in the environment.yaml file, which is in the uh, binder folder of this repository. 
Uh, I mentioned here an app.txt, which would have been uh, installs from apt, but uh, we actually took those out. So that file doesn't exist anymore. Sorry about that. Um, OK, so the first thing that we want to do is to download some data. Um, so I want everyone to, if you're going to follow along, I'd like you to execute this first cell. Oh, OK, you see I have no kernel. If you ever see a cell not execute, it might be because your kernel is gone. I'm just going to restart my kernel here. OK, and execute this cell. And that should download some fastq data into this data folder. So you can take a look at that. Great. And that's the data that we're going to be working with. Uh, so throughout this tutorial, we're going to be uh, editing this snake file. So go ahead and open that for editing and keep it open next to your uh, notebook. The snake file is basically um, where you put the recipe for snake make for, for your workflow. And by default, snake make, when you run it at the command line, is going to look for a file called snake file. You can change uh, the name that it's looking for and the location um, with one of the snake make options if, if you want to do that. But today we'll just use the snake file. So we're going to start with a, a rule. Um, snake make calls each of the steps in the workflow a rule. And this one is called fastqc a file. And all we're going to do in this rule is to run the shell command fastqc on the data file zero hours. 0011.fq. So go ahead and copy this rule, please, into the um, snake make file. And don't forget to save it when we're making changes during this tutorial um, to the snake file so that we can then run it in this window. So I'll just note that um, this notebook is using a bash kernel. And the reason that we chose to do that is so that we can run the snake make <coughs> command. Uh, in this notebook, but one thing that uh, might be confusing is I've also put these code blocks in here, which you're going to be cutting and pasting into the snake file. And these are not bash code. These are um, Python with some extra snake make syntax in them. So if you were to try and run one of these cells, uh, you'll get an error. So don't, don't bother with those. Basically, all, all we're going to be running all day is just snake make, snake make, snake make. So it's these ones we're going to run. All right, so we've got a snake file. We saved a rule in there. Let's go ahead and run snake make. Okay, so we can see the first thing it tells us is it's building a DAG of jobs. Um, DAG stands for directed acyclic graph, and this is how snake make determines its uh, dependencies and manages the dependencies. It sort of creates this tree. Uh, and then decides what it needs to run. And here it only finds one thing to run, the fastqc of file rule. And then it goes ahead and runs that bash command. And this is actually the output from the fastqc job. And we see it completes. Um, and we should actually be able to go into the data folder. And we can see we now have um, new files in there. There's a zero hour.html and .zip file. So this is an example of a fastqc quality report. Okay, uh, so that worked great. The only thing is, it's not very impressive, really, because um, all we've done is run a bash command, which we can have just done at bash. Um, in fact, if we run this again, it's just going to rerun again. So it's not really kind of doing that uh, reentrancy bit that I was talking about um, at the beginning. And the reason for that is that we have yet to um, tell SnakeMake what the dependencies are for this rule. So to do that, we define inputs and outputs for each rule. So for example, for our rule fastqc of file, we can have as an input the data file, the um, fastq file. And then as the output, we are expecting to get a .html and a .zip file. And again, the body of the command will be the fastqc um, on the data file. So let's try this one. I'm going to paste that in here. OK, and now if we run snake make, 
Okay, so now it's building a DAG and it says there's nothing to be done. Okay, so why is that? Um, so that's because these files already exist and uh, SnakeMake is cleverly doing dependency management here. It sees that we've already created these and it says I have nothing, I have nothing more to do. Um, there are ways to get SnakeMake to run anyway. You can force it to run all the rules with this minus F option. So if we did that, it will run again. Um, another way is to delete some of the output that you have defined. So if we were to go ahead and delete our, one of these output files, snake make will rerun. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that, but you can try it if you want. And a third way is that if we change the modification date of any of the input files, then snake make will rerun. And the reason for that is if, if you've changed your input, then snake make wisely thinks that might change your output and it will choose to rerun the job. So we can go ahead and do that. And you can see that it reruns. Okay, so that's, it's important to be aware of um, snake make looking for the presence of files and not, not only the presence, but how recently they were modified. Okay, and I just wanted to mention um, early in this tutorial, uh, an option uh, we've been, running SnakeMake a lot without options here, but uh, really it has a lot of options. You can look at the SnakeMake um, documentation to see them all. Um, but one really useful one is this dry run option. And when you run SnakeMake in dry run, it will show you what it plans to do, but it won't actually execute any of the rules. This can be very helpful, especially if you have a lot of steps and um, you wanna just make sure that what you are about to run is what you expect, particularly considering you know that SnakeMate pays attention to um, steps that have already been completed and also the modification date on files. So I run this a lot. Um, if we run this now, we'll see that there's nothing to be done. We can try it again later when there's something to be done. Um, okay, so then let's add a second rule. We have a six hour data file here. Um, so I'm just gonna add a second rule, fastqc a file two. And the input for that will be the six hour file and the output will be um, the HTML and zip uh, fastqc files. And similarly to this rule, we're gonna have a fastqc shell command on that file. So it's very similar to the last rule. So let's just copy that in here and save it. Okay. So if we go ahead and try to run that, again, it says there's nothing to be done. So I'm trying to demonstrate a few of the early pitfalls here with, uh, with SnakeMake. And one of those is that SnakeMake is designed to run only the first rule in the snake file. Uh, you can change its behavior by passing in on the, uh, on the command line, either a rule name or, um, for example, the, 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 all the files that you want as output. But the most uh, useful way to handle this is to have your first rule in the snake file be a special rule called all. And that rule will contain only input. And the input for that rule is basically all of the output that you want at the end of your workflow. So it's a little, it's a little bit confusing, but this is basically what you want. Um, you put at the top all the files that you want to create at the end of um, the workflow. And based on these, Snake Make will then go through your other rules and determine which ones it needs to run in order to create these. So let's go ahead and solve this problem that way. We'll write an all rule where we'll uh, have um, the fastqc HTML files here in a list. Notice that I didn't include the .zip files. Um, you don't need to uh, because as long as I've specified that I want the HTML file out, then I know that the zip files will be created because in order to create the HTML files, the zip files are gonna be created by this fastqc command anyway. So I don't need to bother specifying them. Okay, so this is the same thing except adding the all rule. So let's try that. Okay, and now if I run snake make, great. 
So now you see um, it is finding that it needs to run fastqcf file too. Notice that it does not run fastqcf file, um, and that's because those results had already were already in existence, so it didn't need to rerun that step. And here it's creating the new output. Great. Um, okay. So let's do a little bit more refactoring because as you've seen, our two rules are pretty similar. We are basically just trying to run fastqc on different files. Um, and so we're going to try to make these rules more generic. So the first way that we can do that uh, is to use some of SnakeMake's magic variable. Um, and anytime you have a, a SnakeMake magic variable or a wildcard, it appears in these brackets and it will be replaced by the variable that SnakeMake knows about. So, for example, input um, we can use, and that is the input of the rule. So if we say down here, fastqc input as the shell command, it's going to take this input and um, re replace this magic variable with that file name and then run that shell command. Um, so we can do that in both of these rules. Okay. And that makes it a little bit more generic, but there are still more ways to make it more generic. So let's take a look at those before we bother running it. Uh, so let's template out these common bits of the name. So if we look up here again, um, the input and the output have similar portions of the, of the name in the file. Um, and we can template those. And this is uh, not, quite the same as the, the magic variable, the input that SnakeMake knows about. Instead, this is something we're creating and we're naming it file name. And um, it's going to be filled in with by SnakeMake because of the pattern matching that SnakeMake does. So we have here specified in our input um, what we want for our output. And so SnakeMake is going to go and look to see how do I create this file, you know, fastqc.html. And if it finds a rule where it has a wild card and then underscore fastqc.html, then it knows that that wild card should, should be this value. Okay, and then um, it will put that same value in the input. So if you're going to use these kind of um, wild cards, then if you use it in input, it needs to also be present in the output because of the pattern matching that happens. Um, it can be only present in the output if you want. So now if we do that, we've created a very generic rule, but if you notice now the body of these two rules is exactly the same. So rather than have two rules, uh, we can go ahead and have one. And that makes a lot of sense because it's really doing the same thing. We just want to be able to run fastqc on multiple files. Just to note that if you do try to run something like this, where uh, there's two rules that defining the same thing, it will tell you that it's uh, ambiguous which rule it should use, which makes a lot of sense. You would get an error. Um, so instead, let's copy and paste this one where we have a new single fastqc rule for both files. Okay, and now I'm going to first um, remove the HTML files that we already created and then run snake make. That way I get to see it rerun everything. Okay, and so now you can see it's running um, two of these fastqcf file jobs. And if we look down here in the output, you can see the zero hour and six hour files actually being run at the same time. So the reason that they're being run at the same time is that um, you can see here, uh, that it's SnakeMake is telling us that we've provided 16 cores. That means it can run up to 16 things in, in parallel. And so SnakeMake has uh, sort of changed its mind a little bit on how it deals with this cores option. So there is a cores option or uh, minus J is the same. It's just a short version of that option. Uh, in the version of SnakeMake that we have in this binder, the cores option defaults to the max cores available. And so inside this binder, that max is 16. Um, originally, I think for a long time, SnakeMake defaulted to one core. Uh, and then in the most recent version, it actually 
requires that you pass in uh, a specific course option um, or it will give you an error if you just run snake make. So just something to be aware of um, in, in the course there. But it is, it is very handy that um, it's so easy to run things in parallel with snake make. Okay, so those two jobs finished. Um, great, so now we have a pretty nice FASTQC rule that will work on any file. Let's try adding a second rule to run multi-QC data. Sorry, so just run multi-QC. Uh, the way you, you would run that on the command line is just this multi-QC data. Um, let me go back to the snake make folder. And it will put the output here so you can watch what gets created. I'm gonna run this. Okay. A little bit slow. There we go. So we create two things. We create a multi-QC data folder. And inside here are a bunch of statistics. And we create a multi-QC report.html. And this, if you open it, looks pretty similar. Um, has some similar, th similar uh, statistics to the original report. It's just combining them all in one. So you can see both of your samples in one file. Okay, so if we want to take this, you know, bash command and make it into a rule in our snake file, we can define a second rule and I'm going to call it run multi QC. As input, it's going to take the output of uh, the fast QC job, so this is the two HTML files. And as Output is going to create a multi QC report and a multi QC data directory. Notice that if you want to, um, to define a directory as output in SnakeMake, you have to use this special directory function to tell it it's a directory and not a file. And uh, the body of this rule will be to run the shell command multi QC on the data folder. Okay. So let's take this and copy it over to our snake file. And I'm going to go ahead and run snake make. Okay. It says nothing to be done. So why is that um, when we added this new rule? Well, one reason is that we actually already have this output because we just ran it on the command line above. Um, but there's a second reason and that is that we haven't specified that we want this multi QC report as part of the final output in this all rule. Right now, the all rule is only looking to create the fast QC results. Um, so to fix that, we can add the multi QC report to the all rule. Okay, so let's do that. Oops. And then um, to get it to run, we'll go ahead and remove the multi QC report and run snake make again. And now you can see it's running multi QC for us. It's not running the fast QC because I didn't remove those files and they already exist. Great. Um, okay, so this is all working pretty well. Um, but one thing that's kind of not so nice is that we're ending, we ended up listing all these files in the input, um, which are basically the output of the fast QC. And we list them again here since they were required as input for the multi QC. So one way to make that a little bit nicer is to use some Python. And so basically these snake files are Python and they're interpreted by Python. And then they have sort of an extra uh, snake make syntax that gets interpreted also like these special rule definitions and these um, wild cards are done handled by snake make but the rest of it is python so um, you can define any python up here um, so i can just create a list python list with these data files um, these would be the fast qc output files that i that i want and i'm adding two extra here these zero hour underscore two and six hour underscore two just to show that we can just continue. It's a little easier to add files to this than in the two places. Um, so now, uh, rather than listing these files twice, we just put this fastqc output in the rule all. And we put it also as the input for the multi-QC. 
Okay, so let's try this. All right. Um, so let me show you, because I forgot uh, to do this earlier, the dry run option in action. Um, we can run this as dry run. And it's telling me that it wants to do two fast QC of files. That's because I added two new outputs here. These first two, there's already data there. And it's telling me then it will rerun multi QC. That's because some of the input, since we're doing it on all the HTML files, has changed. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. That's how it use the dry run option. So it will tell you here. Uh, just show you what it's going to do, and it tells you it didn't actually, you know, do anything. Okay, so I'm going to run snake make and actually run fastqc on those other two files. Almost. And then it's going to run the multi QC. Okay, and now it's done. Great. Uh, so now um, it it's working pretty well. We have one more way that we can make this a little bit more concise. And that is that we do not actually need to list the fastqc output as some of the uh, rule all input. And that's because multi qc um, .html requires the presence of all these fastqc files. It's a dependency of the multi-qc rule. So it's going to naturally create these whether we list them in the input or not. So we can choose not to just to make the file a little bit more concise. Here. And then let's just rerun everything so we get to see the whole workflow. So now it's running all four of the past QC jobs and then the multi QC job, but it only needs to run one time. And you'll see it's doing them all in parallel. Okay, so Pretty cool. Now we have a two step automated analysis where we can easily add new data files um, and then we can perform the fastqc and multi qc tasks on those. Sorry, <laughs> more output. And um, we can rerun things and we can only rerun the things we need to rerun. And it's pretty reusable. We could drop this into another project uh, and reuse it pretty easily. Um, so that's kind of the very basics of setting up rules in a multi-step uh, workflow. Now, uh, I'm just going to take a few minutes to quickly touch on some more advanced things that we're not going to actually run. I'm just going to talk about them a little bit. And then I'll stop the recording so that I can take questions. Okay. Uh, so running things in parallel, we did sort of see. One thing I wanted to mention about that is... Um, that when you're running locally, like all, all the things we ran today, ran on this local binder instance. Um, but you can also run on the cluster. And if you choose to add the cluster option to your snake make command, then the, what you have as cores becomes the number of jobs you can submit to the cluster at one time. So often you can have that be a higher number than what you might have running locally. Okay, so you can specify uh, software that you want to install for each rule, uh, rather than having it all bundled into whatever environment you're running in. Uh, and the way to do that is to specify a file with the required with the dependencies like this. Uh, this file is called mfastqc.yaml, and then you change your rule to have this conda section where it tells what file uh, lists the dependencies. And then when you run snake make, you use this use conda option. And that way you can specify dependencies for that might be incompatible um, for different rules. And they'll only be installed for that rule. 
Okay, uh, similarly to the use conda, there's a use singularity option, which would allow you to specify a singularity image in which to run the specific rule. So you can use containers as well. Um, and you can use Docker containers uh, as singularity containers as well. Okay, so running on the cluster, um, Snakemake takes several options that are related to cluster configuration. You can run on a lot of different types of clusters. You just have to configure what you want it to do. Uh, the minus minus cluster option is where you tell it how to submit the job. So in a Slurm environment, you can use an sbatch command. Uh, this cluster option also takes a file, a Python file, so you can have more sophisticated uh, logic going on there and then you know at the end make sure you tell it what the final command is notice uh, I've increased that this minus J is the short version for the cores option and um, you probably want to run with a higher number anytime you're using the cluster just to not limit yourself um, okay and then in addition you can specify per rule configuration using this cluster config option and you pass a file like this cluster config JSON. And in here, we are de defining some Slurm options that would be default for all the rules. And then you can also do uh, per rule uh, what the option should be. And so that would replace whatever is a default. <coughs> Finally, Snakemake is really moving towards using this pro oops, sorry, this profile option when working with a cluster. So rather than having several different command line um, config options passed in, you would pass in just this profile, give it a name, and that name would represent a directory where you have stored all these various um, configuration files related to cluster running. Uh, you can read more about those here. Okay. Last thing I wanted to talk about is adding Python. Uh, like we said, the snake file is a Python file, so you can add Python in here. So say you wanted to run uh, the same workflow, but on any FastQC files in the data folder that matched a certain pattern. You could use this glob glob to get the FastQ files. And then since we're looking to find what the output, the FastQC output should be, you could loop through those and modify them to um, change it to be an underscore fastqc.html version of the, the name, which would be the output. And that creates a fastqc output list. And you can use that on your multi-QC rule rather than um, you know, specifying each file. And so that would make it a little bit more flexible to drop into a different project or to add different files into your data directory and just have it work. One other thing I wanted to mention is you can, we've been running only bash commands as the body of our rules, but there's another uh, keyword you can use called run, and the run will be in Python, so the body would be in Python. You can run some Python for each rule. In addition to that, there's also within the Python a, um, a shell function that Snakemake has created, so you can kind of run shell commands from within the Python, which is kind of a neat, uh, shell Python mashup. Okay, so that's some of the basic stuff I wanted to quickly go over. I'm gonna turn off the video recording and then take some questions.